And it was very, very effective because ultimately what happened is David Miscavige walked into the IRS headquarters in Washington, D.C. and said, I want to meet the commissioner. I want to see the commissioner. And this was right after you guys they filed thousands of lawsuits. People, they were just getting all like, these beat freedom up by magazines. Yeah. We were taking out full page ads in USA Today about the IRS, full page ads in the New York Times. Like it was a, so just like in other ways of putting it, just unloading all kinds of arti artillery on them to where they were just like beat up. Correct. And Miscavige um, and Marty Rathbun walked into the IRS headquarters and said, they walked up to the reception desk and said, I, w we want to see the commissioner. Do you have an appointment? No. Just tell them David Miscavige is here from the Church of Scientology. And they didn't meet with him that day, but three days later they did. And Fred Goldberg, who was the IRS commissioner at the time, said, look, can you guys, can you turn off the faucet? Can you, can we just be done? And Miscavige said, of course we can. Just give us exemption. Fred Goldberg then formed a special committee inside the IRS to review Scientology tax exempt status. And it was headed by the deputy commissioner of the IRS for exempt organizations at the time, a guy called John Burke. Okay. And John Burke was a really nice guy, and, but he was retiring. He had absolutely nothing to lose. It was the, he was at the end of his career. Yeah. And so he and a bunch of other IRS officials formed this committee, and they asked hundreds of questions and wanted millions of documents. And I literally commuted between L.A. and D.C. with Miscavige and Marty Rathbun and a few other people for almost two years – having meetings with the IRS routinely and providing them with documents and answers to their questions. And in the end, they basically said, okay, we give. What they were really looking for was enough justification to be able to grant the exemption because they had been mandated by the IRS commissioner originally, we need to turn, we need to shut this shit down. Yeah review this mm -hmm. so really their mandate was to review it to figure out how they could do it because they had a problem a big problem there was a united states supreme court case called hernandez v commissioner where one of those people that i told you who had had their deductions denied mm -hmm. took the case all the way to the u.s supreme court jesus and Two years before this whole thing with the IRS, the U.S. Supreme Court said that donations or payments to Scientology were not tax deductible because they are a quid pro quo transaction. Now, quid pro quo has become a big, oh, everybody yeah. knows what it is Hot now. Term lately. <clears throat> back, back then, it was, uh, it was like tax people knew about it, and mm -hmm. that was all. And... There had all, there also the case of the Church of Spiritual Technology had been lost and appealed to the Federal Appeals Court and had been lost in the Federal Appeals Court. So there were these decisions that they had to somehow circumvent. And honestly, to this day, I've talked to various tax professors and professionals and they don't really understand how the IRS got away with this. And at the time when the, when the settlement of granting Scientology exemption was announced, and it was secret for <laughs> quite a while, yeah. and the, the, the actual document laying out the settlement was secret, the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times were like up in arms about this is outrageous and yeah. how did this happen and blah, blah, blah. And Scientology is just kind of, well, we just kind of went, you know, sour grapes, tough, you know, whatever. And that became, in the eyes of Scientologists, Miscavige's claim to fame. 
in October of 1993, when the IRS granted this exemption, he held a huge event in the at the call it the um, LA Sports Arena, and there were about Staples Center. No, it was it's before it's where the Clippers used to play. Oh, where the Cl- okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. And uh, there were about ten thousand people from all over Scientologists from all over the world that were gathered for this event, and he announced this victory. And it was, you know, fireworks, and and he was on this huge stage that looks like a Nuremberg rally with sconces and flames. And the announcement was ultimately after a long-winded explanation about how rotten the IRS is, and mm-hmm. they did this, and they did that, and we did this, and we did that, and we blah, 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 blah. The war is over. That was what the final announcement was. The war is over. We won. And this cemented in the mind of Scientologists, including me, that Miscavige had pulled off and accomplished something that L. Ron Hubbard hadn't been able to, and that he had applied the exact policies of Hubbard on fair game and how you destroy enemies and how you go after people, always attack, never defend, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and it worked. And the... the um, credibility that this gave Miscavige it lasts to this day. Miscavige can do no wrong in the eyes of Scientologists, partly because of that. And when there is massive hits on Scientology PR-wise, like when Going Clear aired on HBO or when The Aftermath was showing, he would routinely order that all Scientologists were to re-watch that event. It's in every Scientology uh, church and mission around the world, and people are ordered to come in and re-watch the, it's called now, the Turning Point event. And it is two hours of David Miscavige patting himself on the back and then announcing that he's done what nobody else could do and got an exemption from the IRS. Now, what happens with documentaries like HBO's Going Clear? Do they, in Scientology, do they confront that? Like, do they, do they like, say, hey, watch this documentary. Here's where it's wrong. Or, no, no, no. They it is forbidden not. to watch uh, what's called N-theta. N-theta is a Scientology term which means uh, interbulated theta. With theta, like you said, is the the term for the spirit, spirit or yeah. spiritual things, and interbulation is upset, and n theta is bad news. That's a, it's sort of short. It's mm-hmm. the Scientology word for what we would say bad news, and so Scientologists are not allowed to watch uh, Going Clear or the Aftermath or read the. St. Pete Times, when the Truth Rundown series came out in the St. Pete Times in 2009. Yeah, the three-part series. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Scientology went around and bought all the newspapers, emptied all the newsstands in Clearwater so that no Scientologist would be able to get that paper. And that has happened routinely. And it is thought in Scientology that if you are exposed to that sort of uh, negative information that it will cause you to be what's called in Scientology a potential trouble source. You will become sick. You will be- have start having accidents. Bad things will start happening to you, and you will have to undergo a course of action uh, that will fix you up. Mm-hmm. In fact, I wrote Leah and I wrote an article about this on my blog this morning mm-hmm. called Scientology Deaths and Suicides, where we go through how Scientology views sickness. But this came about because of Kelly Preston's tragic death from breast cancer and Lisa Marie Presley's son's suicide. 
And people keep asking us, how does this come, you know, what does Scientology have to do with this? And we try to lay out. And a big part of this is this concept that you only become ill and you only and start having accidents and become accident prone or depressed or whatever when you are connected to a source of what's called suppression in Scientology. Right, or anybody who questions anything. Correct. And this can be a person or it can be a book, Larry, Larry Wright's Going Clear book. That could be the source of why you now suddenly became ill, that you read that book, and it it is a connection to a source of suppression. And I mean, it's a the title of that book, "The Prison of Beliefs." It really encapsulates everything that you're saying. It's a prison because you can't question anything no you it's complete cannot close mindedness absolutely you questioning in scientology is anathema to scientology right there's no such thing the word of l ron hubbard is the word of god it is not to be questioned it is not to be interpreted it is not to be uh taken in and refed out it is just to be read exactly and applied exactly as it is read and Scientology is a very, very literal organization or literal study. Mm-hmm. It is, read what he says. If he says this, he means that, and that's it. And it's, um, it's really bad form in Scientology to question anything or anybody, and most particularly to question L. Ron Hubbard. Mm-hmm. Although nowadays it's pretty close to questioning L. Ron Hubbard to question David Miscavige. Yeah. Like he, what he says is the law and that's it. Where's David Miscavige today? Does he live around here or does he live in one of the, one of the big buildings? The all, I mean, there's, I know there's huge amounts of real estate that's owned by Scientology, but does when, he... when he travels around, but when he's in Clearwater, he, he lives at the Hacienda Gardens, that apartment complex that is out there on Keene, just north of Drew, and uh, okay, and he comes into the big superpower building, the big building across from the Fort Harrison, and he, with the bridge that goes over the, the yes, road. exactly, mm-hmm. and he has a private entrance that goes in the the. Garage door goes up and it drives into the basement and he gets out in the basement and he goes up to his office that's in the one of the corner turrets of that building. Yeah. And that's where he works. That's so that's so crazy. He seems like this mysterious character now. Like you never see anything about him in public. You never see any sort of interview with him by anybody. He's just in the in the shadows. Well, he doesn't want to be served with a subpoena. He is terrified of being served with a subpoena. Really? Yes. 